we finally made it to the part of organic chemistry 2 where we're going to kind of go back to carbonyl chemistry. So I know what you're thinking, like, Joe, we already did the Grignard reaction and other stuff. Like, why are we doing carbonyls again? Well, once we did that Grignard stuff back in OCHEM 1, believe it or not, that was just kind of like a tiny little sneak peek into all of the chemistry you can do with carbonyls. And I'm, I'm going to be completely honest with you, gang. This is usually the point where kids start to fall behind and get overwhelmed. So I have plenty of practice. We're going to talk about everything in detail. We're going to take it piece by piece, component by component, very slowly. And I promise if you kind of do what I have laid out for us and you kind of follow along with the videos, you won't fall behind. You'll make sure you're up to date on everything. You'll be able to understand everything and you'll be good to go. Because more often than not, it's not in each individual thing you have to understand in OCHEM. It's kind of keeping everything straight and making sure you don't just go get like get flooded by all the different things thrown your way. All right, so let's do a quick carbonyl reveal review. Sorry, this is going to be a short video, just kind of a refresher of you know the functional group we're going to be doing a lot of chemistry with. So remember, if we're going to do physical properties first, I'm going to start off with boiling point, like we usually do. If I were to give you this three carbon alcohol and this three carbon whoops oop. oh yeah this three carbon aldehyde and I asked you you know who has the higher boiling point remember we think about molecular intermolecular forces here right so if we're looking over here with this aldehyde yes we do have a little bit of a polarity differential right obviously this is a polar bond and this car uh, this oxygen is going to be you know partial negative this carbon is going to be partial positive so we have a little bit of a, like a dipole moment there, a little bit of a positive end and a negative end. However, remember with alcohols, we have the ability to hydrogen bond, right? And it may look like that over here, but remember for a hydrogen bond, for hydrogen bonding to occur, you need an electronegative atom directly bonded to a hydrogen to make him strongly partial positive. Over here with the aldehyde and the same thing with ketones, I'm going to draw you guys a similar ketone, right? We don't have any atom directly attached to, or electronegative atom directly attached to a hydrogen, right? So in the big wide world of things, right, alcohols have a higher boiling point than would uh, aldehydes and ketones because they, well, alcohols can hydrogen bond with themselves, whereas aldehydes and ketones cannot. Okay, so I just want to touch on one more physical property go review some oxidation reduction reactions and then we'll call it quits for this video. Okay, so if I were to give you guys this ketone, this aldehyde, and this one carbon aldehyde right here called formaldehyde, and I asked you, okay, go ahead and rank the ability for these carbonyl carbons to be attacked nucleophilically, right? How susceptible are these carbonyl carbons, how susceptible are they to nucleophilic attack? How easily can they be hit with that backside attack, giving three the most susceptible, the easiest, and one the least? I think we would kind of rank them like this. Clearly, remember, carbonyls are sp2 hybridized, right? Because we have one, two, three bonding areas. We need three orbitals to make those hybrid orbitals. They have, as a consequence of that geometry, they're flat, right? They're trigonal planar. So that means they're completely flat like this. There's no difference between attacking on top or on the bottom, right? Every attack of a carbonyl yields a racemic mixture. However, even though they all share the same geometry, that doesn't mean that we can't have added steric effects, right? So remember, the more groups you add to a carbonyl, the harder to not the more the more unfavorable it is to go in and attack it. So if you can see this one carbon uh, aldehyde, he only has two hydrogens attached to him. I would say he is by far the easiest to get in there and attack. Now we kind of have to deal with this for, uh, aldehyde and this ketone. Well, as you can see, right, we have two carbon pieces on both sides of this carbonyl. That's what makes it a ketone, right? However, over here, we just have a hydrogen on the right and that we, we just have a terminal carbon. That aldehyde is going to be much easier to get to and attack than would this ketone. Right? Nothing too terrible. 
I know you guys could have figured that out. I just want to make sure, you know, I just articulate that to you and just kind of talk through it. Okay, so one more thing, and then we are done so with this video. So we're gonna need we're gonna need to remember and use these reactions, not just in this kind of unit and the material in it, but moving forward. So let's just say I gave you guys something like this. I'll draw one more. Maybe that and this. And we threw on some of this. Okay. So hopefully these reagents look familiar, right? So remember, remember what PCC does. We're talking about oxidizing alcohols, right? PCC would oxidize an alcohol to either a ketone or if it's a terminal alcohol, remember, it stops at the aldehyde. Right here we have a terminal alcohol. So I would say this alcohol would turn into an aldehyde. If we had an alcohol, say, right here, the PCC would just oxidize it to a ketone, right? Nothing crazy there. All right, now let's go to sodium dichromate and H2SO4. Remember, these are the reagents that would absolutely send alcohols as far as they can get oxidized, all the way to a carboxylic acid if they can. So I say we oxidize this guy to a ketone, and this OH right there is going to go all the way to a carboxylic acid. So I would expect a product very similar to this. Okay? Just a little review. I hope this, you know, is familiar. I know it's been a little time from OCHEM 1, and we haven't necessarily used these reactions, but this is the carbonyl unit, so we're going to come back to them. Okay. So just to close this out, I just want to bring up our two reduction reactions that we talked about in the past. They do come back in this unit, especially when we go talk about carboxylic acids. Okay. Well, actually, I'll just use the same exact structure. Actually, if I give you guys the ketone and I give you guys the aldehyde, if I were to give you guys a little NABH4 as well as a second step of ethanol to clean up to protonate, all this is going to do is just take all the carbonyls and turn them into alcohols. And remember, this is the more mild form of an oxidation. So this would, or sorry, mild form of a reduction. This would reduce everything back to an alcohol except, say, a carboxylic acid. It reduces everything back to an alcohol except that functional group. So if I were to give you guys this again, and we wanted to make sure we could reduce all of this to alcohols, we wouldn't use the NABH4 and ethanol. We would instead use lithium aluminum hydride or if you want to use the abbreviation LAH with a second step of acid. This is the much more aggressive reduction agent, right? He reduces almost anything. Actually, he does reduce everything. He will send this carboxylic acid back to an alcohol. Okay, so that was a little quick review of carbonyls. In the next video, it's going to be a long one. Don't, gotta, don't get turned off by it. It's just going to be me doing sections of mechanisms, much like in that video with the EAS uh, mechanisms. So I have a big worksheet where you're going to practice them all, but just watch the video, just take it piece by piece, and then attack the worksheet. All right, guys, see you later.